The Niger Delta environment is highly degraded due to the intensive exploitation of oil and gas resources caused by oil spills, gas leaks, and even gas flares. This has negatively affected agriculture in the region as most of the farmlands have been destroyed and rivers polluted, which has caused the frustration and lack of livelihood for farmers. The negative impact on agricultural practices by oil extraction activities have contributed to the abject poverty and conditions of social deprivation experienced by communities in the region. What are the effects of oil spillage on fisheries activities in Bielsa State? How has this affected poverty level? This week, we will answer these questions with officials from Bielsa State Minister of Agriculture. Mr. Obuma Imbata, Director, Fisheries, Bielsa State Minister of Agriculture, kick-started a program talking about the effects of oil spillage on fisheries. He went further to narrate how some 25 years ago, in some parts of Bielsa, like Kuluama, fishermen would have to paddle just some few meters away from home to get fish and still have a very good catch to the point where some of the fishes were buried because of the quantity they caught. But these days, this can no longer happen due to continuous oil spillage in these areas. Plus, some species of fish have also gone on extinction. Has this act affected fisheries and the price of fish in the market? Does it in any way contribute to the poverty level in the state? Mrs. Dieprie Zolo, Chief Fishery Officer, Bielsa State Minister of Agriculture has this to say. Even the rural farmers, once they get their fish and other stuff from their farm, they can just prepare their meal. But these days, it is very difficult that if you go to rural areas, even some of those farmers, they eat meals without fish because it is difficult for them to get them. It's as bad as that. I could remember when I was discussing with some of the coppers posted to our department last week, they were like, I'm shocked, why is it that? But yes, so that we hear our fishes now, I say, my brother, that's how it is now. Some persons have used gears and the rest, so we can't really get these fishes that we used to get back in those days. Hmm. So the little that comes, it's very, very, the cost is high, so the poor man cannot afford it. And some persons, when they bring them, they already know these big men that are ready to buy at any cost. So they reserve it for those persons, thereby making the poor man lack the fish that is needed, that will supply the needed protein for them and their household. Shedding more light on the major effect of oil spillage, Mr. Mbata narrated. The oil pollution has really reduced you know, fishing activities in the coastal areas. These are people that they are poor already. And we know predominantly they are fishermen. Because of the oil pollution, it has affected even their, their crafts and their gears. And even the ashery areas has been totally polluted. And it has resulted in the even migration of some of these species. And so the catch is extremely very, very low. And they've been discouraged because they now have to move away from the fishing areas down to the oceans. And when it gets to those areas, it's really turbulent, and that there could be a boat mishap and all those things. True. So as a result of those activities, it has slowed down, you know, the fishing rates in those areas. With no good measures on ground to curb oil spillage in Bielsa State, poverty level will definitely be on the rise, as fish farmers will have to increase the price of few fishes they catch in order to be able to afford to buy other food items, as well as replace their sport gears for survival. The guests from Bielsa State Ministry of Agriculture both expressed the possibility of fishermen losing their jobs if government and other necessary agencies refuse to spring into action. Mrs. Zolo advised the government to come up with strict rules and regulations that will put in check the boats carrying crude oils and plying our waterways, as well as oil companies who dispose of their waste into our waters and lands, reckless abandon. She added the sensitization of individuals living in rural communities on the negative effect of pipeline vandalism will go a long way in helping to curb this menace. Mr. Mbata, on his part, advised the fishermen to be in touch with the Minister of Agriculture 
and also that of environment on issues concerning oil spillage. That way, they can get the needed help. We advise the fishermen to always get in touch with the Ministry of Agriculture okay. and also that of the environment in case of anything concerning oil okay. spilling. So they were able to do the needful so as to strengthen them to move on with their natural occupation. Okay. I think the government should come up with some serious rules governing those at vehicles plying our waterways and also companies that are close to our coastal areas because these persons carelessly discharge their waste products into nearby canals and water bodies and even on the land where erosions and the rest will just sweep them into the water bodies to destroy them. So that's another way. Then another thing is sensitization of these rural communities because most of them they are not educated so once they get angry they are the problem of themselves because they will just go into the um, oil lines break them vandalize and the rest and the effect tells on them not just others it starts with them so you because it pollutes their water too so the findings from this program as well as other studies suggest that oil production and spills negatively affect fish production the fisheries and mariculture sector are impacted by the physical oiling of equipment and contamination of seafood leading to tainting and the effects on commercial and subsistence fisheries lead to substantial losses. The repercussions of contaminated seafood and public perception are very serious and require restoration of market confidence and public health assurances to move the economy forward in this sector. This program is proudly sponsored by Stakeholders Alliance for Corporate Accountability, SACA.